Hi, my name is Erin Hodson and I'm an extension entomologist with Iowa State University. Uh, this summer we've seen a lot of soybean pests in research plots and also in commercial fields, including a lot of different beetles. We've had bean leaf beetle, Japanese beetle, Calaspis beetle, and also some flea beetles. We've also seen a nice mix of caterpillars in soybeans. So we've seen thistle caterpillar, green clover worm, alfalfa caterpillar, and soybean looper. But what I want to spend some time on today is a new pest in Iowa called soybean gall midge. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for learning how to scout for soybean gall midge and then some more detail on how to identify it compared to other soybean pests you're going to see in the field. So let's go. So soybean gall midge is a new pest in soybean and really became an economic issue in Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota in 2016 and 17. It showed up in a few fields and has been expanding now throughout those uh, states. And right now you can find it in Iowa. So from the top of the state to the bottom of the state, all along the western edge, it's fairly easy to find soybean gall midge, but the intensity is highly variable. So sometimes it's only a few plants that get infested. Other times it might be uh, like a larger patch uh, and, and sometimes it's even more severe where it moves into the field interior. So uh, it does cause yield losses and sometimes very significant yield losses so it's an important pest to scout for. So today I just wanted to show you some of the things that I look for when trying to see if a field is infested or not or how intense the infestation is. If I'm trying to confirm whether or not it's soybean gall midge or a fungal pathogen, I'll use a knife to kind of split open the stem. And what you see here is some browning decay. And then right in the middle is a bright orange maggot, which I would call soybean gall midge. So the, the third inch star is bright orange. Most people can see it with the naked eye. And it's a good way to distinguish between this midge or maybe a pathogen. It's just splitting open the stem. Brown stem rot, Phytophthora, Rhizoctonia, there's a number of pathogens which I think initially from the outside could be confused with soybean gall midge. So it's, it's a good idea just to carry a pocket knife or something that you can kind of peel back that top layer and get into this, the stem right, right above the soil line. This is a plant that I suspected had soybean gall midge and when I tried to remove it from the ground, it broke off right of the soil line. So it becomes very brittle when the larvae are feeding on the inside of the stem and oftentimes it will just break off right at the soil line. So that's also an indication. So you see here some dead trifoliates. So the plant is under some stress. I see some discoloration here and enlargement of the stem right above the soil line and it becomes really weak. And so that's when I would take a knife and try and dig a little bit deeper to see if I can find any maggots. You know, if I, if I come to a field where I, I don't know if I have soybean gall midge or not, the first thing that I would do is look at the first two rows. And ideally, you would look at the rows that are closest to where soybean was growing last year. So uh, like this over here, um, that corn plot had soybean in it in 2019 and was heavily infested. So this is soybean in 2020. So um, ideally, if I wanted to, to look for the presence or absence, I would look at the at the soybean that was closest to corn last year. And what you would find is if you're walking along the edge, a mix of plants that are dead and dying, and they're mixed in with relatively healthy plants. So at the beginning of the season, it's easier, of course, because plants are smaller. You'll notice a plant that is wilting and turning brown compared to the healthy surrounding plants. Later in the season, it's more difficult because if you're just looking at the top of the canopy, it's hard to see those plants that aren't doing well. So what I would encourage you to do is separate the canopy, look for trifoliates that are browning, wilting, or turning discolored, and then take a closer look at the, um, oh, did you hear that? The cracking. Um, take a closer look at the base of the stem near the soil line and look for that discolored lesions or galls that may start to form. And you notice right here um, how they're discolored and turning brown compared to healthy ones. So I would look for that. And also the plants that are kind of on their way out become really brittle and they crack. So as you're separating the canopy and you hear plants that are cracking, um, that's a bad sign. That's a sign that those plants are heavily infested. So as you're parting the canopy later in the season, just make sure you're listening for plants that are brittle.
This corn plot was in soybean last year and was heavily infested. Mm -hmm. So if I want to just see if they're there or not, what I would do is just concentrate my efforts on these first two rows. And I would look for wilting plants, stunted, discolored, mixed in with a healthy looking plants. And then if I suspected maybe the base it looks discolored, I would try and take that plant out of the ground and then split that stem open and look for orange maggots. Okay, should we check down there? Yeah, we can walk along. Okay. I did see some that didn't look so good, um, kind of mixed in with some healthy looking plants. So if you see um, right there, um, it's hard at this level to know if it's a fungal pathogen, if it's an animal, if it's herbicide injury, it's sort of hard to tell at, at initial glance. And that's when I would take a, a closer look at the base and maybe even pull a couple plants up to confirm the presence or absence of maggots. Wow. That's pretty cool. Okay. And let's see if there's just a couple more. Right here is likely a plant that died a long time ago because of soybean gallmage. And it's surrounded by pretty healthy looking plants. And so that's the nice thing about soybean is it is a compensating plant and it will try to fill those gaps if you have plants that died. So usually the if you're looking on top of the canopy, it is harder to see that plants are missing. So that's you have to take a deeper look at the base of the plant. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about some research that's going on not only at Iowa State but at the University of Minnesota, South Dakota State, and the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. And what we're doing is taking some advice from people that worked with corn rootworm for a long time. And we're using what's called Illinois style cages that are placed over the soil. What we're trying to do is capture soybean gall midge adults that are coming out of the ground and they're looking for mates and, and laying eggs for the next generation. And so as the midges are coming up from the soil, they get collected in these canning jars. We have people that are collecting these canning jars and we are uh, able to answer a few different questions from the data gathered from here. The first uh, question is where does soybean gall midge overwinter? And we put these traps in a number of different habitats and found out that they just simply drop to the soil at the end of the growing season and that's where they overwinter. And so that's from two years of data, we're pretty confident they just overwinter in soybean. The second question we're trying to answer is how long does it take for them to emerge? What's the emergence window? And from, this is our second summer of research and what we've been able to find out is it's a fairly long window of emergence. So from the first midge to the last midge in these Illinois style cages, it can be two to three weeks. And so uh, that's a fairly long period of time that adults would be coming out and then looking for mates and laying eggs. The third thing, uh, the third question that we were trying to answer is how many generations do they have a year? And again, just with our second summer of research, we're pretty confident it's three generations per year. And so right now it's the end of July and it's really the, the first full generation of, of soybean gall midge happening now. There'll be a second generation and then it's uh, the third generation that will overwinter in soybean. Another area of research that we are doing is monitoring the temperature at some of our research locations. And what we're ultimately trying to do is build a degree day model so we can more accurately predict when adults come out, how long they come out, and uh, the egg laying period that, that they'll have uh, within soybean. So this is our second summer that we've had these little data loggers uh, placed adjacent to some of our research plots and it's too early to know much about the degree day model right now but in a couple years we hope to establish uh, a more predictive model to help with scouting and management efforts.